Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to the health benefits of fasting. So now on to our next topic. The antioxidant and anti-inflammatory benefits of fasting. So again, quote from one of our sources here. Oxidative stress is one of the steps toward aging and many chronic diseases. And again, I don't have to tell you the really well-justified hype uh, surrounding antioxidants, oxidative stress. It is indeed one of the main causes of disease uh, because free radicals uh, interact with proteins and with our DNA, our genetic material, and damage them. And several studies have shown that intermittent fasting enhances our body's resistance to oxidative stress. Fasting is an antioxidant, to put it very simply. Uh, and fasting has anti-inflammatory properties. Again, inflammation has been shown to be a major uh, part of autoimmune diseases, a major risk factor for cardiac disease and so on. So bottom line, let's start with the bottom line. Intermittent fasting can reduce oxidative damage and inflammation in the body. And this really has anti-aging benefits and multiple health benefits. And I shared with you at the beginning of the series the amazing data on uh, young rats who live twice as long as their counterparts if they are on a fasting regimen from early age. So how does this happen? So, well, the, the possible antioxidative effect of Ramadan fasting was evaluated. So this is now a human trial data uh, from this source unraveling the metabolic uh, health benefits of fasting related to religious beliefs. And close blood work on 50 fasters looked at so-called pro-inflammatory cytokines. Cytokines are chemical signals that promote inflammation in the body. They make our immune system rev up. They uh, bring inflammatory cells to, um, uh, to bear on some side of the body. And a lot of these cytokines are like the interleukin-1b, IL stands for interleukin-6, tumor necrosis factor alpha. And look at the Ramadan-induced reductions in these cytokines compared to baseline. 78%. 57% and 71%. Uh, and this is an amazing amount of reduction in these inflammatory markers uh, that was demonstrated in those fasting for the month of Ramadan. And the level of interleukin-6 remains significantly low one month after Ramadan fasting, suggesting that fasting has potential long-term benefits. It makes long-term adjustments on the inflammatory profile. Again, just to give us a feel for the complexity that lies beneath the surface. Interleukin-6 is a very, very complicated molecule. Here's sort of a ball and stick diagram, as they call it, of the, the protein. And you can see its multiple effects on uh, tumor growth factors, CD4 cells uh, that are involved in the immune system, uh, fibroblasts that are involved in uh, healing and scar formation, neutrophils, which are part of the white cells in our bloodstream that are involved in destroying tissues, um, things like bone resorption, uh, B cells, another type of lymphocyte or white blood cells that make the antibodies within our bloodstream. So interleukin-6 has a very broad a set of effects and the reductions that are produced by fasting should be inshallah very beneficial to us let us take just one example again because as a side benefit for us as muslims interested in science we want to look a little bit beneath the surface the things that blissfully allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made subconscious. We don't have to worry about regulating how our cells work. We don't have to consciously give instructions because it would be entirely beyond our capacity. But interleukin-6 activates something known as the phosphoinositide or phosphoinositol 3 kinase pathway. 
this pathway, the PI3K pathway, and a downstream target of the pathway known as protein kinase B are activated by interleukin-6. This activated protein kinase B phosphorylates a nuclear localization signal on a protein or enzyme known as DNA methyltransferase. This phosphorylation makes this um, methyltransferase move into the nucleus and it then recruits other methyltransferases including uh, uh, DNMT3A and DNMT3B and they as a complex recruit something known as HDAC1 and then that complex in turn adds something known as a methyl group, a carbon-based group, to islands on gene promoters. Gene promoters are what will make genes be expressed because as we said before we have a lot of genes that are not used in each and every cell and when the methyl is added to uh, the gene promoters it can turn them on or turn them off. In this case it inhibits the transcriptional machinery from accessing the gene so this pathway actually inhibits the gene transcription and so increased interleukin-6 by methylating DNA sequences and decreasing gene expression can have significant effects on our cells and we've just gone through one small part of the pathway through which this is done. Now what's the bottom line? Well, for example, interleukin-6 has been linked to depression and major depressive disorder. The epigenetic effects, and remember again, epigenetic means we're not changing our DNA, we're just changing how the genes are expressed, how often the genes are transcribed, how much we are using them and their interactions with each other. And the effects of interleukin-6 on depression are mediated by this repression that we have gone through the pathway of how methylating the gene promoters in this particular case inhibits the transcriptional machinery. So interleukin-6 when it is high represses something known as BDNF brain-derived uh, neurotrophic factor and this neurotrophic factor helps brain cells grow and be healthy. High interleukin-6 represses this healthy protein product and that is part of the inflammatory effect of high interleukin-6 on brain health, on hurting brain health. And we have gone through how fasting truly decreases the levels of interleukin-1, interleukin-6, tumor necrosis factor alpha, and so forth. And so again, we're just getting a glimpse behind the curtain as to how fasting helps with our health and in this particular case, how it helps as an anti-inflammatory, and in this very particular instance, how it does so by reducing the levels of interleukin-6, and as interleukin-6 levels are reduced, the brain-derived neurotrophic factors will actually increase and help our brain health and combat depression. So fasting is not only good for our physical health, it is good for our emotional health. Now let's move to the pro-immune side of fasting. Fasting, it turns out, also helps our immune systems. And a study from this source quotes the study conducted by Dr. Walter Longo from USC. And we find that fasting reboots the immune system. It helps the immune system clear out old immune cells and to regenerate new ones. And this process protects the body in general and, in fact, has been shown to be especially protective against damage by aging and by chemotherapy. So basically, when we starve, the system tries to save energy. And one of the things it does to save energy is to recycle a lot of the immune cells that aren't needed. And it starts with those that may be damaged. And so it, in fact, pairs down, kind of like trimming a tree and taking off the, the unhealthy branches it trims down and makes more efficient and more healthy the immune system. Also detoxification. 
when we lose fat, a lot of the toxins in our body are actually stored, dissolved in the fat, and they are removed from the body. And this quote is from Dr. Razin Mahrouf uh, at Oxford University about specifically the health benefits of fasting in terms of detoxification. A related topic is cellular repair and autophagy, and intermittent fasting has been shown to help the cells repair themselves. As we talked about, fasting makes the cells initiate a waste removal process, and that is known as autophagy, and it turns out that that is actually very, very important to our health. Um, the cells break down and metabolize broken and dysfunctional proteins that build up in the cells. It is these dysfunctional proteins, for example, that lead to things like Alzheimer's disease. So increased autophagy can protect against several diseases, including cancer and Alzheimer's disease. And so the bottom line is that fasting triggers a metabolic pathway called autophagy, which removes waste uh, from cells. In our next topic then, inshallah, we will talk about the protective effects of fasting in the setting of cancer, because I don't want to make any one lecture too long. Um, and uh, that is, uh, I guess, uh, the protective effect of, uh, of uh, Islamicity, uh, asking me to keep the lectures short and manageable. So, inshallah, you will tune in for the next one. Salaamu Alaikum.